um, today, Deuteronomy chapter number 28, verses 1 through 14. There, there are some things that I want to show you here, and I want to show you today, hopefully I can get to at least five of them, to kind of give you a better idea of what's happening in Deuteronomy and what Moses is talking about. You know, we hear about Deuteronomy all the time, and we get excited because it says, you know, whatever you put your hands to, right, that the Lord is going to do what? Bless, right? And that you're blessed going where? In, and you're blessed coming out. You'll be blessed in the country. You'll be blessed in the what? City. All that is really good, and those, those are things that we really need to ponder or contemplate. But we also want to take it a step deeper so that we can really get our minds wrapped around what Moses is saying there in the book of Deuteronomy. All right, and it's Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14. So I won't, I won't belabor us in reading all 14 verses, but I, I just think it's, it's uh, doing our due diligence to at least read a couple of verses, and I want to teach you something that, that we may not hear taught a lot, but it's very true of this scripture uh, in this Moses compilation of sermons. All right? If you fully obey the Lord your God, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all, let the church say all, oh. all his commands I give you today, he then says, the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. All right? He then says, all these blessings shall come upon you and accompany you. All right? Um, if you obey the Lord your God. He then says, you'll be blessed in the city. Excuse you. You'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. He then goes to share the fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the cows of your herds and the lambs of your flocks, your basket and your kneading trough will be what? Blessed. Finally, he says here, we'll close right here. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you do what? Go out. Go out. Good. All right? And so we're talking about this piece here, obey big, obey big. And let's do a quick recap of Israelite history, just a brief recap of it, so that we can really understand, we believe what, uh, I believe what Moses is attempting to teach us here. All right, you got to remember that just before this, you know, the first five books of the Bible, that's known as the law, right? That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So we're in the fifth book of, uh, the, of what we call Mosaic literature. And we, we, we find in book number two, it, it, it's ended, it's beginning appears at the end of the book of Genesis. And then in the second book is known, you know, Genesis, Leviticus, Exodus, you know, they start this, this law and all this kind of stuff. Then you get to Exodus, right? And when we get to Exodus, we find this slave mentality happening, right? Because Pharaoh now enslaves who? The children of Israel, all right? So the children of Israel are enslaved there approximately some, what, 430 years, right? And so then here comes this guy, Moses, you know the, Mo you know the Mosaic story, you know, uh, his, his mother puts him in a basket, floats him down the river, Pharaoh's daughter takes him in, raises him as their own, you know, this kind of thing. Then one day Moses sees, you know, an Egyptian beating up on, you know, one of his kindred, his brethren, and Moses basically goes and murders the man, then buries him in the dirt, you know, y'all know that story. All of that comes to a head when God says to Moses, I want you to go tell Pharaoh to do what? Let my people go, right? Yeah. And so then, you know, Pharaoh, you know, becomes hard-hearted, takes the straw away from the Israelites and wants them to produce the same amount of brick, right? All right? And so then, you know, finally, you know, after God sends what we know as the 10 plagues, right? Then they, the Pharaoh decides, you know, let's, let's let them go. And then he gives them jewelry and gold, whatever the case may be. And they, they go out and they get to this place called the Red Sea, right? And when they get to the Red Sea, the Red Sea is before them, but who's behind them? Pharaoh's arm. And Pharaoh's intent is to do what with the children of Israel? 
right, to slaughter them or re-enslave them, right? And so God does the miraculous. He has mercy on the children of Israel, and he opens up the Red Sea, right? And they walk across on what? Dry land, all right? Now, they embark upon a journey in the wilderness that is, Sister Stevenson, from the outset or onset, a two-week journey, but they end up messing around in the wilderness how long? 40 years, right? So now, you know, they're supposed to be going to this thing called the promised land, right? Which was in Canaan. And they sent spies over there. Y'all remember that? And the spies come back, 10 of the 12 come back and said, we can't do it. Aaron and Caleb said, we are very able to do, you know, what, what, you know, uh, what we can do. Or two spies came back and said, we can do what God says do. All right? This is why I go through this, because I want you to understand that Deuteronomy 28 is really built off the back of the children of Israel going into the promised land. And many times we overlook that when we're reading the Bible because, you know, Exodus is a couple books or so over, right? And But we've got to be able to connect the dots of what's going on in Israelite history, which, you know, eventually becomes, you know, part of a portion of the Christian history, right? So now we see Moses begins to preach this sermon, if you do this. God's going to what? Do that, right? And we see that begin to happen in Deuteronomy chapter number 28. And so many times we, we don't connect those dots, but I think we need to connect those dots in understanding that Moses is, is telling the children of Israel, in, in short, if we were to modernize it a little bit, this is how you're supposed to act if you want to get what God says you can possess. So he starts out, if you fully obey the Lord, right? And basically adhere to his commands. In, in other words, if you're going to possess this promise that God has for you, you're going to have to do it whose way? God's way. And, and you remember sometime back I taught you that there were people over there already, Jebusites, Hittites, Amorites, all these people were over there, right? And, and, but God had the land for his people. And so they were to go over there and create a righteous standard and not commingle with those other persons because God wanted them to be a holy people, right? So he writes these things, Moses does, in Deuteronomy 28, you know, if you do this, then God's going to do that. And he says, the Lord will establish you as a holy people as he promised you on oath. If you keep the commands of the Lord your God, and here's the big word right here, Sister Cora, and walk in obedience. Let the church say obedience. Obedience. Yeah. He said if you walk in obedience to him. All right. So then I talked about this briefly on Sunday. I'm just going to uh, mention them today. I'm not going to go into the teaching moment here. Uh, there are three areas of blessings that we single out from the jump. He talked about the nation would be blessed. If they did what the Lord said do, that the nation would be blessed, number one. Number two, he said their agricultural endeavors, their farming and their cattle, and so, so to speak, would be blessed. And then he said they would have the reputation of a holy people, all right? And they will be able to have a testimony as it pertains to all the peoples of the earth, all right? And what I want to talk to you about real quick today is uh, how when, when Moses writes this and gives them this vivid picture of the promised land uh, captured in their obedience, he, he, he talks about city life. Let the church say city life. Yeah. yeah. He, he talks about how the city life was to be blessed, how it has been said, you know, that, that God had the country, but man, you know, but man, man, the town that God gave, you know, man, the country to take care of, you know, to be a steward of, like God really does many times today, all right? So now, here's what's crazy. If men would only carry, I want you to hear this, if men would only carry the law of love, let the church say the law of love. The law of love. Yeah, see, if they would live by what we call the golden rule, right, uh, then cities would soon put on an air of holiness. I want to say that again, you know, so that we can remember that. If men would carry out the law of love, let the church say love. Yeah. yeah. If they would live by the golden rule, or in short, if they would live by the commandments, then the cities would soon have to put on an air of holiness. Amen, somebody. Amen. And, and wickedness within them would hide its head. What did, 
What did we just say right then? What did we just teach right then? Somebody talk to me. What just happened? 